Hi guys, David Jennings here from the Online Trading Mastermind and we've just got the second webinar in the series. Uh, you may or may not have watched the first one but I emailed out uh, my subscribers and Justine did the same to hers and we got some fantastic feedback. I think in that first webinar what we really wanted to get across was where are we right now in the market. We looked at the four stages of the market and really honed into where we were. Then we could do a little bit of a recap of the market conditions and Justine shared a little bit about her market exposure guidelines which are absolutely key. Um, then we kind of had a look at some real live trading examples and of course I peppered in my two cents worth and asked a question here or there. Um, the questions that everybody sent in, the, the great feedback that we got, I think uh, we had over, it's over a thousand one hundred views you know, just over 24 hours since we posted it and it's probably going to be much higher than that now. So we did get some great feedback and some of the questions have helped to shape the presentation that we're going to talk about today. Now, I won't steal Justine's thunder and, and I'll let her share with uh, you what it is we're going to be covering in this, but uh, rest assured, this is, you know, right, uh, critical uh, to the to the moment, uh, this information that you need to know and uh, what Justine's been doing to survive and thrive in the current market conditions. So firstly, Justine, just want to welcome you back and thank you so much for having the second webinar with us. Thank you, David. Yes, looking forward to chatting again. Yeah, so, well, maybe I'll just leave it to you and, and yeah, you can share with us what you want to cover. Okay, so first of all, I'll just do my usual housekeeping before we um, get started and that's just to remind you all that I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Um, I'm only licensed to give general advice. Um, so everything that is included in this presentation is all for information purposes only and it's all to illustrate how I trade the stock market um, and I'll just leave that disclaimer up there just for a couple of seconds so you can have a read of that before we um, kick off. Mm. Cool. I uh, included the text for this as well, Justine, uh, underneath the video as well. Oh, okay. So Fantastic. If people want to have a closer look, they'll see it there too. Great. Well, what I wanted to do was also carry over from the presentation we did last time because it was very much about the market conditions and what's been happening and how I've been trading it. And what I wanted to cover in today's presentation is give you a bit more of an overview of my trading approach and also show you some of my um, you know, best and worst trades of the last financial year because uh, in Australia we run from uh, July to end of June financial year and we've obviously we've just had a financial year finish recently and something I do with my mastermind members is regularly share my trades with them so the last mastermind call we had was an end of financial year call where I went through this and I'm going to be sharing some of that with you today and it's to show you more of some of the breakout and trending trades because last presentation was really about volatility trading which um, you may trade differently and we talked about when different things happen in the market you may, you'll have a different strategy based around that and mine is all to do with my money management strategy that changes depending on what's happening in the market and what market stage you're in and if the volatility certainly changes in the market then um, you know having an aggressive exit and a win for profit strategy and you know they're just some ideas and these are all things that I share with my clients and discuss with my clients as well. And I also want to talk about the importance of a trading plan because that is the big thing that basically is the difference between successful traders and those that are not. Um, and then um, some Q&A time with you, David. <laughs> with, with the um, trading plan, and I know it's something as well, especially a lot of my subscribers and so many people, if they've been in the game, they've heard this idea of the importance of the trading plan and you'll hear it over and over and mm -hmm. over because it is so important. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's funny, uh, and perhaps uh, towards the end I'll uh, recount some of the emails that I had get sent through as people were sort of commenting on how their trading has gone over the recent market action and it always just surprises me how many people still don't have a trading plan in place. They know the importance of it but mm -hmm. if they really ask themselves that tough question, do I have a documented trading plan that tells me what I should be doing at any instance within the market? I can say probably 95% of people probably say no. Mm. Um, so I, I think if we can go over that, that would be 
you know, just keep reinforcing that for people. Mm. And I think there's, I mean, the, the, often quite a statistic is that 80% of traders fail. And within that 20%, only about, um, you know, 15% will have mediocre results and the other 5% are the ones that have the, you know, the larger gains and that's all because they've spent that time developing that trading plan. And I mean, I know myself, when I decided to trade the market full time, I just wanted to trade. I didn't want to sit down and write a trading plan. <laughs> but I tell you, yeah. I stopped trading after the World Trade Center crash and wrote that trading plan and everything changed after that. But um, yeah, we'll talk, talk about that a bit more later. <laughs> Cool. Yep. Mm. So first, let's um, kick off with. Let me share a bit more about my trading approach, so you can get a bit more feel as to how I trade the market um, with the two main systems that I trade. So I'm a mechanical trader. Now, when I talk about mechanical, it's probably a bit like a systematic trader. So I have um, Metastock set up to run a scan for me, and when a report comes up from that scan, I'm selecting from that scan. So there may be more than one to choose from, uh, may be more than one share to choose from on that day. Other days there's only one to choose from. It, it varies from day to day. So there is some um, extra rules that I apply to help me with those choices. Um, and But where I am really mechanical is with my exits. So just having that trailing stop loss. And my whole goal of trading is all about money management. And that golden rule of trading is to let your profits run and cut your losses short. And you can only do that if you have strict money management rules. Um, one of my big eye openers was um, oh, over a decade ago when I read Van Tharp's book, Trade Your Way to Financial Freedom. And I was obviously attracted to it because it's all about finding the holy grail and realising there is no holy grail. <laughs> if only we all, you know, we go on that search and we think that there is one. But the big eye opener for me was he did a lot of testing and, ex um, and exposed the research information in that book was um, how he tested you know, a system that was a successful system and the results of that. And then he had another system which was just, I can't remember if it was a coin flip now or a dartboard, but it was a random system where there was no thought process around the entries, but it had the same strict exit criteria that the other system had. And it performed very well purely because of the strong money management and that really goes to show that the entries are a minor part of trading, it's the money management that is so important, it's what you do next, it's knowing when to exit, it's making sure your losses are much smaller than your loss, um, your losses are much smaller than your profits and that's the only way you can be profitable in the market and it is a 50-50 chance when you buy into a trade, you don't know what it's going to do next. None of us do. I mean, we all wish we knew and we buy into it expecting it to be profitable, but that doesn't always happen. So that's why, and I keep repeating myself <laughs> about why money management is so important. And when I talk about money management, this is what I mean. Position sizing your trades based on your risk amount deciding up front how much are you prepared to lose on any one trade as a percentage of your total capital. Um, what is that in dollar figure, figures? Are you comfortable with that? And you size your trades using a position sizing method around that. Um, when I've worked and done coaching with clients, the ones that I find that have traded emotionally, um, that are not happy with their results, they're the biggest weakness that is very common across the board was they were never comfortable with the amount of loss they were going to take on a trade, so they never let their exits run out. They would exit prematurely only to let a profitable trade go in the fear that they might have to take that full loss. So it has to be a figure that you're comfortable with and it might be smaller when you first start out and then it increases as you, as you become more comfortable. Another strategy I use is what's called portfolio heat, which is managing your maximum open market risk at all times in the market. So if the market goes against you in a large way and a whole lot of your exits are hit, how many, you know, how much money in total could you withstand losing? So the most critical part of any trade is when you first open the trade, um, because when you first open it, if it doesn't go your way after that, you're going to take a loss. Um, and that's going to happen from time to time in trading. So you will you know, I enter it with a stop loss, but I'll only open up so many of those initial trades um, and then I can't open any more trades until those stop losses start to move up. And once I've got a stop loss at break even, which is now a no loss trade because I'm not going to lose any money if it hits at stop, 
I can go and find another trade. So I'm always managing the total number of those first initial positions that are at the highest risk at any one time. And when we have those large market drops, you know, that's the only control you have over what can happen. And boosting your winning positions. I mean, once you get onto a winning trade, buy more of them. I'll buy more of them and I will actually risk the profits to buy more of them. I don't average down. I don't buy when a share is falling because I believe that's going against the trend. Um, if a share is falling in price, it can certainly get cheaper and cheaper. And I don't want to be buying more of something um, that's getting cheaper. I'd rather be buying when it's getting more expensive and I've got profits open on the table and I'll risk some more profits to buy more because that means it's trending upwards. I mean, this is all for um, long trading, of course. I'm talking about being a buyer here and I'll probably talk that way many a time because that's what most people know how to trade um, over short selling. So, you know, there's just some of the strategies um, to employ and within that you're going to have um, a stop loss strategy as well and we'll talk more about that later. So I trade both shares and CFDs. C CFDs is basically a simulated stock market um, and I know not all countries can trade CFDs um, but you can treat CFDs the same way you treat shares. The main difference with CFDs is you can easily trade short. Um, you can go long and short very easily and you have a much wider range of um, of um, instruments to trade. You can trade over any equities, equities markets around the world, you can trade indices, you can trade foreign exchange, commodities and so on. So you can do that all um, with CFDs. But this can be applied um, with other instruments too. Um, and so what I'm going to share with you mainly is how I do it with shares and CFDs. So the way... Justine. I'm Sorry, wondering David? which um, I'm just wondering which markets as well you do trade. We we talked a little yep. bit in the last presentation about uh, you know trading the Australian stock market, but I know mm -hmm. you also trade the US market as well. I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked about the instruments. I'm curious to know what markets you focus in on. Yeah, I mainly trade the equities market. I have occasionally taken positions in gold, um, and uh, when you know when the charts are showing signs, but I mainly, my scans are set up to run across either the Australian equities or the US equities. And yeah. the, the times that I have moved into the US market is because the index in America has been outperforming the Australian market. So that's given me a signal that, um, you know, hey, I can go to another market if I'm not getting um, good mm. signals in the Australian market. So the ability to Seems actually like change markets. And, analysis. That's right. That's right. And nothing in regards to my rules changes. I'm just running my scan on a different market. <laughs> yep. So I apply Very all the same things. Mm. And so here's a rundown of exactly what my trading system is all about. As I've already mentioned, I have Metastock, which is the charting software and one of the prime softwares out there. And the reason why I use Metastock is it's a toolbox. I have the freedom to create my own scans, my own indicators. You can basically code whatever you want. You have to have a bit of understanding around the programming language, um, but I provide my clients with codes of my systems so they don't have to get bogged down with that. Um, but I have it set up with a mechanical filter, so um, which is basically all my entry rules turned into code and put into Metastock to basically scan for shares that meet those rules. So I don't have to look through a whole lot of stocks. And then I have a trailing stop indicator for the exits. And you'll, this will become clearer when we go through some actual trades and you'll, and you'll see how that trailing stop indicator works on the charts. I also have a smart trader spreadsheet. So once I've run my scan, I've selected a share, I will go over to my spreadsheet and position size the trade, which is the first money management strategy that I do before I enter a trade. I determine where my initial stop loss is going to be set, I put it into my calculator and it tells me how many shares I can buy. So straight away before I've even opened that trade, I've taken the first step with money management. And then, um, you know, the, I then use a smart trader spreadsheet to track and manage those trades. So once the trade is open, I input it into that and I manage the trade through that. So the two systems that I mainly trade is um, a long-term weekly system. And this one trades long only because there are times when we're in a, in a when we're in that bull market and I want to take complete advantage of that market because the most money is made during the bull markets. 
Um, rising markets are the ones where you can double, triple, quadruple your money. And they're the sorts of markets that I want to pyramid and add to winning positions and really build on and, and hold them for a long period of time for as long as they're going to trend for. But in between that, um, because sometimes that system is not trading when the market's you know, not favourable for it, I am always actively trading my medium term daily system. And this is the one that I focus more so on CFDs and it can hold shares from a few days to a few weeks possibly a few months if it's uh, a trade that's running really well. I've had you know, shares, good winning trades have held up to three months. Uh, losing trades I've had open for less than a week. So you'll find that your winning trades will always have a longer hold time with a medium term system. Uh, and this trades in both long and short direction. So I can swap direction with this one very easily and very quickly. And I call it medium term because its average hold time is between about 25 and 30 days. Uh, I have been there, I've day traded, I've short term traded. It doesn't suit my lifestyle these days. I've got two young children. I can't sit in front of the computer screen the entire time the market is open during the day or even wanting to do it of an evening when they're in, in, you know, in bed and sleeping. I need to sleep as well. So you know, I've tried all the different um, styles of trading and you have to develop a, a system that suits your lifestyle. You don't want it to be an extra added stress into your day. Um, I spend no more than half an hour maximum on trading a day. Some days I've done it all in five minutes. Other days I might spend a bit more time. On the weekends I also do a bit of analysis looking at the index charts and the sector charts and, and my weekly trades. I only look at my weekly trades at the end of each week, but my daily trades I look at um, every day. Do I need to move any stop losses today on my trades? And I go in and do that. Some days I don't even open a trade and I'm just managing the exits on them. So, uh, you know, I, you know, I basically created trading to suit my lifestyle, and it didn't start out that way. I spent a lot of time learning it because when you first start trading, it's it's like starting a new job. You've got no idea what you're doing, and I had no idea. Um, and you have to take that time to learn, write that trading plan, and develop that new skill. Um, when you go into a new job, you spend a lot more hours doing things until they become second nature and, and trading is just the same. I think that's one of the things I like most about the way that you do things. It's so incredibly systematic and you have a look at that and again, people who've sort of been following along uh, with my stuff for a while, like you've, it is just those step by step. It, uh, once you've got that system in place and you do have a trading plan and you know what the rules are, uh, you, you, it can be very much automated and it's not something that needs to be a huge time suck. And I know you've got uh, a very young family and mm. you've, it's always impressed me the way that you sort of balance your trading around that lifestyle where you manage to, um, you know, you've, you've built up a, a very uh, successful uh, sort of trading system and methodology that works uh, mm. and then that's the way that you've automated it's freed you up to have a chance to then start to mentor people and then you take that money and then reinvest it back into your trading uh, float as well. So it's just like it just continually grows. It's it, Yeah, it's impressive to see. Mm. And I just fell into the mentoring. I never set out to teach people. People just kept coming to me. Um, I was part of a trading group when I first started out and I, I, I'm the sort of person that likes to share everything because um, I like to inspire people. If I'm doing well at something, I'm the sort of person that wants to help other people do well at it. So um, mm. it was from that trading group that you know I had somebody's son who used to sit on the meetings come up to me and say, I'm looking for a mentor and, and you're it. Will you take me on as a student? And I thought, oh gosh, I've never, you know. Um, I, I did have a background where I have had to write manuals and, and, and teach people because um, I've been a project manager in the past. Um, so. It, it did come naturally to me and I just enjoyed sharing and teaching him so much and before I knew it I had the evening colleges asking me to teach and <laughs> it just kept going from there. But being able to, you know, when you love something that you do and being able to, you know, teach people that sort of skill so that they can also control, um, you know, their financial future is, as well is, um, is fantastic. Mm. Yeah, cool. uh, so just to now put this in visual terms of what we've just been through, uh, this is um, a screenshot of Metastock and this is pretty much what I do each day. You know, I open up Metastock, I hit the Explorer, I highlight my scan, I run it, a report comes up which takes um, only a couple of seconds to run and then 
there's the report with the results. I then highlight all those shares and I open them and I view the shares. And this is how I view them. I view everything in a candlestick format. You'll notice that there's very minimal indicators on my chart. Um, I used to get bogged down with too many indicators and I think we all do as technical traders. Every book we read on charting, um, that author talks about the indicators they love in such a way that you fall in love with them too and before you know it, I had a, you know, I had a mm. 10 indicator checklist and I was, I had so overcomplicated trading, I didn't even know how to trade in the end. <laughs> so I had to strip all that back and I just went back to the basics. So because in the end it's pure price information. Um, and volume that's, that's driving those indicators and, and calculating those indicators. So, um, yeah, so I've purely got on the chart a candlestick format because I like visually knowing whether it's an up day or a down day by the colour of the candle. Um, not, you know, there's bar charts and some people love bar charts, but I can never remember which side, the, you know, which is the open, the close on that little line. I have a 30 period moving average on my charts and that's all for that market stage analysis that I talked about in the last webinar. I have the volume with the moving average over the volume and that's to help me show volume strength. I only use one indicator which is an MACD histogram and I usually say to select one um, that you can use to help you your, with your decision making process. So when I run a scan and there's more than one share to choose from, um, I will then use that indicator to help me with that choice. And if I'm getting a diverging signal with one share, I will reject that one and pick the one that isn't. And then I have an average true range on my chart and that's all purely for money management reasons. So as you can see, it's kept to a minimum. And it's all about trend analysis and support and resistance. And that's what I'm looking for in the charts. And if things have, you know, I'm looking at running a long scan, if anything has immediate resistance, I'm going to reject it straight away. So some, you know, things get rejected very quickly. If 10 shares come up in the scan, I could easily cull down to two or three. Um, from the visual rules that I have and from there I make the choice with a few extra rules. So there is some of that um, visual rules that are involved because I can't take on board 10 trades. So if 10 trades came up in the scan and some days yeah. 10 trades doesn't come up in the scan. For example, just to show you how quick the process is of me running a scan, what I'll do is I'll open Metastock up for you um, on my screen now. While you're and doing that I as do, well, Justine, um, I might ask, while you do that as well, I might just ask um, the methodology that you just went through there and, and the chart that you pulled up um, felt very much like for the long trading system as well. Um, yep. Is the process the same when you're trading that short term, both short and long as well? Yes, I'll show you. I run both a long and a short scan right now and, and show you yep. how it's the same. So. I click on my Explorer button. I'm just going to focus on the ASX 300 shares. I'm going to run my long system scan. I press OK. There you go. That's how quick the scan runs. I hit reports and yesterday one share came up. So there's only one share for me to look at. And if I open that chart, it opens behind with exactly how you saw on the screen before. Then I will go to my short scan. I'll run that. Once again, I'm just doing it on the 300. I hit reports and only two shares came up. Not Yesterday, in the Australian stock market was a very mediocre day. Not much happened. We had a sharp rise in America overnight and um, because Australia had had its recovery already, we didn't really seem to do much. So you got, you know, fairly even scans there and I can open up both those charts that quickly and, you know, that's how quick the process is. So it does not take very long for me to run a scan. And this could be over the S&P 500. This could be over whatever country you're in and the market that you've selected to trade. So that's how fast the, the scan actually runs and that's why I can sometimes trade in five or ten minutes. And then after I've um, chosen the share, I go to my position size and calculator, which is my Smart Trader spreadsheet. And all I have to do in, then is plug in the share price, the ATR, it works out where my stop loss should go, I check the chart to make sure yes it's sitting in a good place um, and then based on how much capital I have and the percentage risk I'm prepared to undertake on that trade, it tells me how many shares I can buy. So you can see how it's systemised. 
Mm. And then once I open the trade, you know, I go to my broker's website, I place the trade and I set the stop loss as soon as the trade is placed, that initial stop that I use to position size the trade with, I then plug it into my spreadsheet. And my spreadsheet has one worksheet dedicated to every trade. So it's a bit like a trading diary as well. But it tells me when I can pyramid, it tells me where my stop loss should be sitting. Um, it is my trading plan tailored into a spreadsheet. And all the information is on there. Um, and I put my exits in when I sell out. I can put a bit of a trading diary in there about why did I enter the trade, why did I exit the trade, um, any, if I was to receive a dividend. It basically allows me to track everything for that trade. And I can multiply enter into the trade and multiply exit out of the trade. And then it gives me all the information on a total sheet. So I can see at a glance, well, how much capital do I have left to trade today? Do I have any money available to trade today? What is my portfolio heat telling me today? Can I even open a trade based on my portfolio heat today? What's my current percentage return? And everything is then summarised into one trade sheet. And that's based on the closed trades and the profit and loss on them. And the open trades based on where they're stopped their stop losses are sitting today because that's the reality of the trade if their stops get hit. And that's what's called a total reduced equity method because I'm looking at open trades based on stops, not um, open profits. Uh, and then it's all summarised into one worksheet for me. So I have a summary page with all the shares listed and I tend to go to that a lot just to see, um, you know, where the stops are currently sitting and uh, as well and I can see everything summarised and I can sort that in certain orders of the most profitable, you know, which trades are more profitable than other trades and, and you can sort within that summary page too. And then I, the most important, another most important part, everything's important in it, <laughs> is the evaluation <laughs> page. I can see at a glance, you know, not only my return on trading capital, which is, as a trader, is one statistic but you need to have more information than that. How many winning trades did you have compared to losing trades? What was your probability percentage? What was your average win size compared to your average loss size, which then determines your average win to loss ratio? What's your average hold time? And then your average hold time on winning and losing trades, because if your losses are much bigger than your, your winners, maybe you're holding on to your losing trades longer. So you can see maybe some weaknesses in your statistics. And my whole goal of my statistics is having my average win size much larger than my average loss size. I mean, I'm on par with 50% wins to 50% losses. That's my average. And most traders that I talk to, that's, that's common, um, especially with a, a medium-term system. Because, um, you know, basically it's a 50-50 chance when I enter a stock and I will get out, you know, when the stock is hit. But those losses are much smaller than my winners. And if I'm running at a 1R, when I talk about R, that's the risk amount that I set out to lose on a trade, um, and I'm averaging 1R, I'm only going to be breaking even if I have 50% winners to 50% losses. So, but if I'm running at a 2R, uh, a win to loss ratio of 2, which means my wins are more than double my losses, I'm going to be profitable in the market. So that's why it's so important to make sure your winners are much larger than your, your losing trades. And sometimes it can only be one trade could put you in a losing situation um, that you let go, that you never had a stop on. And then it all tracks into an equity curve for me. So if you want to track an equity curve, you just input some figures once a month and it will, will chart that for you as well. So that spreadsheet is my tracking mechanism for the market. And as a trader, you need a good record keeping structure to know where everything is in the market. And no. Justine, with mm -hmm. the um, equity curve um, that you just mentioned there, always interested to find out uh, as far as the way that you take profits as well. And obviously you've plugged that in there and um, depending dependent on uh, which trading system that you're looking at, I imagine the shorter term system, uh, obviously trading shorter term, maybe um, do you take more yep. profits out of the money, out of the market or are you just constantly letting it compound and grow? Um, I, I'll go through periods. I mean, I'm an investor in other areas as well with property and things like that. So there has been times when I wanted to invest in another area and I have pulled some funds out to put into that investment. But most of the time, I allow it to compound and grow. But you do have to reward yourself as a trader. If you've had a really good um, winning streak and you've followed your plan and you've done everything, 
go out and reward yourself. Go out and buy yourself something nice. Go out and have a nice dinner and celebrate because um, you need to celebrate those times as well. And mm -hmm. you know, we we are trading to make money, and some people, you know, we're trading also to create an income for ourselves. So you know, there will be times when it will continue to compound, and there will be times when I will take some profits for myself. <laughs> Um, mm. you know, some income for myself. So it depends how dependent you are on that money. And when I usually, people that are first starting out, I say the less dependent you are on that income, the higher chance of success because you trade so much more emotionally when you are dependent on that money. And if you have to make a set amount of money every week, that is going to affect your trading and your emotional intensity in the market. So... For me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've also found like uh, seeing that as well, like I mean, that was one of the, the big drivers. I think people need to get in their head is is first thinking, uh, I need to make sure that I've got enough cash flow coming in that my overhead expenses are covered. Things like rent and food and all of those mm. basic things. So that uh, all too often you see sometimes traders what they'll do is they'll get started. They might quit their job or scale back their hours, and uh, but they have to make a certain amount of money and it puts an immense pressure on them to perform, which mm. uh, oftentimes makes them make bad decisions. I know for, for me personally, that was a big driver for setting up a lot of what I do online as well um, because I, I, knowing this, it's important, I think, to have another a cash flow driver as well, so that way the cash flow comes in and then you can funnel off uh, part of that to the trading float and, and not be so uh, dependent and reliable. I actually see trading more for me, and this might just be my mindset, um, for the capital growth. I know a lot of people do use it for income, but with that, unless you've got another stream, uh, you know, there can be some problems there because you become reliant on it, but mm. trading doesn't work that way. Sometimes, you know, you'll have those winning streaks and other times they'll be losing streaks. That's right. And we know one trading year will be better than another trading year. Um, it's not like you can, you're going to get the same weekly wage that you get in a job every week out of trading. <laughs> you're going to have one yeah. month that might make you a lot of money and then three mediocre months or a losing month after that. So <laughs> it's, mm. um, it's not... Um, consistent that you can guarantee. The goal is to survive when you first start out. I mean, I started trading purely for cash flow because I was a property investor too, but I found you can't just go and sell a house and get your money back like that. I love the liquidity of the market. And most people that are property investors, they, the rule is your asset rich and cash poor. And, um, you know, it was the cash flow for me with the market and the liquidity of it of the market that, you know, I could trade and create some money much more quickly than, you know, sitting on a property for a long period of time. Um, I mean, you can renovate and do other things with property, but there's a lot of hard work involved in that as well. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but, and, and we do, we go into the stock market with those dollar signs flashing in front of our eyes and imagining the large sums of money that you're going to make, and the reality is that usually doesn't happen straight away. Mm -hmm. And if it does happen, your ego gets the better of you, and you can sabotage it. Um, so because all of a sudden you think you're invincible in the market, you start doing things you shouldn't do, I know, because that's what happened to me, and <laughs> and you sabotage it. So, <laughs> um, and oh, there's a great book out there by Nicholas Darwis of how, how I made $2 million in the stock market, and anybody that's trading and, and you read that, you can relate to the whole emotional roller coaster that he talks about in there. And um, for him, he realised that, the less involved he was in the market. He did better when he travelled overseas and was trading remotely while the market was closed and placing trades with his broker outside market hours than he did when he was back in America trading on a, on, you know, in a room with a whole lot of other traders. Um, the emotional intensity was so much different. And it's, it's knowing that and realising that and seeing that in your own trading and knowing where your weaknesses are. And one of my weaknesses was taking profits too early. So once you realise a weakness, well, what can you do differently so that you don't keep repeating that. And it might be as simple as, well, sell half instead of selling out of the entire position. You know, you're still mm. keeping some profits open on the table. So sometimes it's just a simple thing that you can tweak um, to overcome that. <laughs> mm. yeah, I suppose it's just having that, uh, that insight. And that's one of the reasons why I think having a mentor, having a coach, having some sort of mastermind group is so important because 
you, you oftentimes can't see the forest for the trees. You're in the thick of it and it just takes someone just outside of you to go, have you thought about doing this? Like you said, I mean, that's fantastic insight there on well, why don't you just take half of the profit? That way you can still let the, the, uh, the profits run, but also you can satisfy that, you know, oh, yeah, but I want to also limit my risk. So it's kind of a little bit from column A, a little bit from column B. That, mm. That's great. So... Mm. I'm interested to see. Well, tell us about uh, how the last financial year sort of planned out for you, looking at some of the trades. Yeah, and the last financial year, you know, in Australia especially, has been challenging because it's been a sideways market. And this is where, you, like we said, you can't guarantee what you're going to make every year. Um, I told tr traders when they first start out, your goal is to survive. You want to survive long enough to learn and keep your capital intact. And that's pretty much what your first year is all about. And if you can achieve that in your first year. Your next goal is you want to outperform a term deposit where you could have other, you know, your money may as well be sitting in a bank account in a term deposit if you in, instead of trading. So you want to outperform where else your money could be invested. And then as you progress as a trader like myself, I basically want to out, outperform the prime index that I'm trading. So if it's the ASX that you're primarily trading, what did the ASX 200 rise or fall by for that year and did you outperform that? If it's the US, what did the S&P 500 or if you're trading a particular sector like technology stocks, maybe what the NASDAQ did, but how much did it rise or fall and I want to outperform that. And when I talk about fall, if it fell 10%, um, that doesn't mean I want to lose 10% of my money, I want to make more than 10% because I know how to short sell. <laughs> mm. So I've successfully outperformed the um, ASX 200 index uh, pretty much for the last eight years. So, um, and that's what my goal is. And, you know, my returns change from year to year. Some years I'll have well over 30% returns, other years, and, and, you know, last financial year because we had that sideways market and I've been trading at half risk and half heat for that market, my returns are a little bit lower. So I was looking at 18% returns. So, but hey, I've made money and I've done very well and I've still outperformed the index because I think the index, I can't remember now what it, but I, I know I more than doubled the index. So mm. um, that's what you want to look at as a trader and some trading years you're going to, you know, will outperform others. So, I mean, I've had four years of over 30% returns and, you know, now I've got a year where I've made 18%. So and that's what's going to happen. But I recognise that the market wasn't performing and so I toned things back. I'm trading at half risk, half heat levels and, and so on because the market was in that sideways stage. Um, I could have, um, yes, I could have increased it all up but it made me, you know, trade more conservatively, um, you know, and I, I have an aggressive exit strategy that I've been employing. And I'm going to show you some trades now where you can see how I've aggressively exited with some trades and then you'll see with other trades where I just exited because my stop loss was hit. So the first chart on the screen here um, is Linus Corporation. This has been one of my babies of the last year with both my long-term and my daily system. And you will have a few standout stocks that will make you the most money for the year. Now, I love breakout and retracement trades. So, and my system will bring these things up. So in this case, this share, it was already in an existing uptrend. It had found support around this line that you're seeing on the chart now and it had fallen back to that line. And when it bounced up with a beautiful white candle making new highs, um, I entered into that stock. And every time you see a blue arrow, a little tiny blue arrow on the chart of that share, if I run my scan that day, when I run the scan that day, this share would have been in the scan. So all those little blue arrows identify that that share would have come in, up in the scan that day. So I entered into the share after it had had a nice pullback, bounced off support again, and when it started to make new highs with a beautiful um, green candle or white candle if you use black and white. Then it gapped up and then it didn't do a whole lot. It came back down and you can see the purple line underneath is my trailing stop loss. So that tracks underneath the share and every time a new higher close is made, it moves up. When there are no new high closes, it flatlines. And then the share took off. And as you can see, so did the stop loss. <laughs> hmm. um, but the share rose so sharply and so fast over four trade days and br bursted through $2 
and had a huge gap. I mean, the day before it had just closed on two dollars and rose as high as um, nearly two dollars forty. Had risen a large percentage, which is not normal market, you know, not normal conditions for this stock. I took win for profits. So you need to have some rules that define well, what would you class as win for profits and when would you take action. So this was one that I aggressively exited before my stop loss was hit and took profits. And then um, a couple of days later my stop would have been hit anyway. So even if I let it run out to my stop, I still would have had a profitable trade. And I held this trade for 41 days. Um, I made over three times my risk amount on the trade, 52% on the total trade size. And because it was a CFD stock with 15% margin, I made 342% on the margin amount. So that's um, one yeah, trade to show trade. you a win for profit. Um, now this is another trade to show you how I would just exit, as, you know, leaving the system as been. My trailing stop loss is hit. So I entered into this share. This share had been getting nice resistance at about a dollar ninety, um, which had touched on that line a couple of times and then it bursts through with a beautiful green candle um, and it came up in my system but I can't tell you now why I didn't enter it, my heat might not have allowed me or maybe uh, it was quite a strong move. Um, I will put things on a watch list when I see things that I like and look for another opportunity to buy in if I can't buy in that particular day. And this was one of those, it, it came up in my system, I put it in a watch list, it fell back near its support level and then it showed signs of bouncing up. So I entered into it in here after it had a little bit of a retracement from its strong breakout and then the share continued to stay above that um, uh, resistance level breakthrough which is what you like to see and then it took off quite nicely, it fell back, it took off and it fell back and then I was just taken out of the trade when my stop loss was hit. So it's just once I'm in a trade it's just a matter of me editing my stop as it moves my way and eventually it will take me out. So that's basically a, a standard trade from my system entering, you know, from the, the entry but then I just exit when the stop gets hit which I'm eg regularly changing as the share goes my way. And I hold that trade for 70 days so you'll see my winning, top winning trades will have much longer hold times than a losing trade will. And I made 30% on the total trade size and there was 149% on the margin for that CFD and I made more than double my risk amount on that trade. Okay, so looking at the next one, now this is another um, long trade. I entered into this trade when it had been downtrending and you can see that in the chart here and it built up support um, at about 86 cents um, and it really tested that and when it broke through its downtrend line with a beautiful green candle, it came up in my system and that gave me another confirming signal the next day and it was above the round number of a dollar the next day because sometimes the round numbers can provide resistance for a stock. So um, if a share is near a round number, I might hold back and see if it breaks. This share broke through one dollar the next day so I ended in at a dollar three and I pretty much rode this share all the way up and it goes up and down, up and down and my trailing stop loss keeps me in um, and I exited um, when it hit its resistance because it hadn't been beyond a dollar forty-five, and you can see back here it hit, had hit that point. So when it hit that point and was now showing signs that it was rejecting it and falling, I exited there because with the sideways market that we've had, any time that a share gets to a resistance point and now is showing signs of falling away, I will exit before my main stop is hit. In a normal trending bull or bear market, I just let my stop loss tell me when to get out. So. That's what I mean about how sometimes you might have a different exit strategy depending on what the market's doing and how it's trending. The share did take off and actually break through resistance but then it failed and um, I would have been stopped out of it over here anyway. So if I had have let that share play out, I probably would have had a similar result. So I held that trade for 86 days, made more than double my risk size, it was a 32% um, profit on the total trade size and 161% on the margin. Okay, so moving on, this one's a short trade, just to you know, give you a good example how I will go from long to short uh, when, the, when the scans are showing up strong signals in one direction or another. So this share had been trending upwards quite strongly and I've left the 
support and resistance and trend lines on here. And then it started to build up a bit of a triangular pattern. And it actually broke through the support line of that triangle near its trend line and then broke through the trend line the next day. Now I'd just been away on holiday so I didn't see this um, this break and it um, it fell and um, went sideways for a bit so when it broke down again and I, that's when I saw it and I could see that it had already had a sharp break, it was now clearly going downwards, I entered into it there. And this share fell very sharply very quickly after my entry and is a good example to show once again how you can employ a windfall profit strategy. Now sometimes depending on the conditions I will sell out of the trade entirely. Um, other times I will sell half and let the other half run to my stop loss. This share fell to a support level um, and then with a big black candle so I decided to take some profits off of the table the next day so that if it didn't break support um, I protected some profits. If it did, I still had a trade open. Because sometimes shares can fall, you know, continue to fall just purely out of fear, uh, and people just want to get out of the stock. Um, it did bounce, and because I'd sold half, I was happy then to ride the rest and let my stop loss tell me when to get out, and that's what I did with the rest of the trade. Mm. So that trade was a lot quicker. I held that for ten days in total. Uh, it was a 14% on the total trade size and 141% on the margin for that stock. And once again, over double my risk size um, on that trade was what I was my profit on the trade. So let's move on to the next one. Now this is a I, I wanted to show you what winning trades look like, both long and short, and different exits, but also show you what a losing trade looks like. So what you've just seen there are my top winning trades and this is one of my worst trades for the last financial year. I entered into this share when it looked beautiful, it had been trending upwards, it had broken through a resistance line with a nice white candle and a gap. I entered into it, it held that um, resistance and was getting support from there but then it broke through and with a gap it took my stop out. So I was simply taken out of the trade because my stop loss was hit. And so I held that trade for 21 days, made a negative 10% return on the trade, negative 42% based on the margin, and, and my loss was just under my 1R because I want to make sure that no one losing trades exceeds my risk amount, which is 1R. So this was 0.9R. Um, what I'll find when I enter a share, sometimes it will move my way a little bit and maybe I only lose half an R. Um, you know, half my risk amount or so on. So this is one where I took um, my full risk amount because the trade didn't make a new higher close after I entered it. And that's why my stops were so important. Yes, it did then rebound and move higher and then failed again. And, you, you know, it's a matter of, well, if there's no other trades, you can get back into things. Sometimes you get taken out of trades and, and they continue um, to go your way and you, you just feel like you got whipsawed out. But that's part of the game of trading. There's no perfect exit indicator, no perfect entry indicator. But if your statistics, uh, you know, are showing you that you are performing well, you know, you've got to expect some things like that will happen from time to time. Not every trade's going to be exactly the same. So that there was an overview of a range of different trades that I took last financial year with the top winning and also a losing trade to show you how I've traded those particular stocks. There's absolutely no way that someone could trade the way that you do without having a plan. Like I mm. know that's what the slide is now and we're kind of leading into that but mm. I mean I'm really hoping that as people watching this um, they keep on referencing back to themselves and the way that they trade the market and really this is all an exercise to make sure that you get this aha moment, that mm. feeling when you just go, right, I need to have a trading plan, I need to make sure that I've thought through everything before I start trading, mm -hmm. so that way when it comes crunch time, I'm, I'm not under pressure, I'm just following my plan. That's right. Mm. And you know, as a trader you need to consider all the things that can happen with your trading and if you pre-plan that, you know what to do, you don't have to emotionally go through it and think in your head and try and decide, you've actually documented it and, and you pre-planned for that. So, uh, you know, and that's what a plan's about. I mean, you wouldn't go and buy a small business, say a local coffee shop or um, 
a retail shop without first deciding is that going to be profitable? Am I going to make money if I buy this? And, and assessing all the figures and then putting a plan together as to how you're going to market, promote and actually make money out of that business. And trading is the same. I mean, you're putting your money in the market and you're risking that money. So you need to treat it as a business. And and that's why, you know, it's basically a business plan for trading the market. And in order to survive, that's why it's so important to have that plan. And, you know, as I mentioned, you're putting money at risk. And your whole goal is to achieve a profit, just like any small business. So you need to treat it like that business and you need to set out how you're going to manage it. And I sort of talk about your plan being as your blueprint for trading. Like if something happened to me, my husband, you know, the plan's in there, my husband could go to it and know what to do. So, uh, and you need to have a plan that is, you know, going to have all the information in there from, you know, not only what structures you're trading through, but it asks some serious questions to consider as a trader too, like what type of style of trading is going to suit my lifestyle and developing a plan around that. How many distractions am I faced during the day? Um, you know, so it's there's a lot of questions that form part of that plan which help you put it together, you know, and you're going to have your entry and your system criteria and your exits too. And there's going to be a multiple range of exits based on certain things that are happening in the market. And, you know, past market conditions and what you've been trading through, you then want to update your plan and review plan from time to time. It will be a work in progress when you first start out. And, um, and as things happen and you've just experienced that and you've realised, well, I would do this differently next time, you then document that in your trading plan. So it will change and evolve as you evolve as a trader. And, you know, a lot of people put it off because it is a big effort to sit down and write a plan. It feels like you're back at school. <laughs> um, you know, we sort of leave school, get a job. We, you know, we're quite happy not to have to do any so-called schoolwork. So it is a bit like doing homework, but you need to do that. And I tell you, once you do it, it clears your head because you've got all this stuff going around in your head <laughs> and you get that out of your head onto paper, you can think much more clearly. <laughs> So I, I think the biggest hurdle like a lot of people have is that the fear of as well, am I doing it right? Am mm. I including everything that I need to? And then what happens? The, the fear of, okay, if I sat down and planned everything out and then I started trading and then, well, what happens if even after I do that, it still doesn't work? Mm. I feel like that's something that, that people just have. It's, it's almost like, well, how, how do I know that I'm... I'm doing the right thing. Mm. Well, and, and that's why some of the questions, you know, in the plan is, you know, what's going to suit your lifestyle, um, you know, and then you select an instrument that's going to suit that, and then you're going to develop a, a system around that. And sometimes mm. you have to try different things to know. Like I told you earlier, I, I tried short-term trading. I tried day trading sitting in front of the computer screen. I've given quite a range of different instruments a go before I settled on the systems that I've been trading now, which you know I've been trading since 2002. So, um, you know, but you do go through a bit of an evolution working out what's working for you and what's not working for you. And some, but you have to realize that when you first start out as a trader, the first trades that you're going to exit, you know, if you've got a system, is you're losing trades because your losing trades have a much smaller hold time than your winning trades. This will be different for a short-term trader um, that only trades a couple of days because, or a day trader because their losing and winning trades will pretty much be the same. But from a medium to a long-term trader, you'll go into the market and say you find five shares. Out of those five shares, two do very well. Um, you break even on another, but two as soon as you open them don't go your way and you exit out of them. So as soon as you open up five trades, two automatically you take your losses on and you've got three running then you break even on one and two are still running in the market. You go and find another three trades. One out of those three does very well and you exit maybe at a loss and a small loss on the other one. You go and find another two trades and before you know it, you build into ten trades but you've taken five losses. But you've got five trades still running in the market and usually what happens then, that people say, that's not working. They shut down those trades that are still open to make up for their losses on their other trades to make them feel better about it and so they haven't lost any money and say so that didn't work. And the reality is they go back and look at those trades later on and go, oh my goodness, I would have made much more money if I had left them open. But, you know, it's we've got to go against our natural instincts of what we want to do as a human, which is 
protect our money. And um, yeah, you've got to go against some of those natural things and realise that losses are part of the game of trading and you are going to take your losses up front. But, and the whole goal is to keep those wins much larger than the losses. And the only way to do that is to let those winning trades run. And you've got to let them run long enough <laughs> in order to do that. And Mark Douglas in his book Trading in the Zone says, a good sample size is 20 trades. Once you've de designed your trading plan, just trade with a very small amount of money, exactly 20 trades as per the plan, and don't deviate from it, then assess your statistics. So you need at least 20 trades to assess the statistics of your trading. And if you do that with a very small amount of money, you take the emotions out of it and you're able to trade the plan, you can really see how that's performing. I mean, you can do back testing too, and I went down the path and did all the back testing, and the back testing just gave me the confidence to trade the systems, and I back tested over the Australian and the US markets. But in reality, what you actually do compared to what happens in the back testing can be very different. So, and that's one of the reasons why I wrote my book, Smart Trading Plans. Um, John Wiley Publishing came to me in 2007 and asked me to write a book on trading plans, and I said, more than happy to do that because I'm at such a huge advocate of having a trading plan that um, I really wanted to help traders write that trading plan. And that question that you asked before, David, is where do you start with a trading plan? What do I put into it? I mean, I basically found all these trading templates all over the inter internet and in the end, and questions you should include into it. But in the end, I, I realized, well, I've got a business and marketing background. I used to write business plans. I went back to my business plan template that I used to write in my job and I adapted that into a trading plan and taking into account the other things that I've learnt along the way. So it's a business plan for the stock market and the book's a guide and as part of the book you get the free downloads to a Word document so you can write the trading plan as you read through it. And the sorts of things that are covered in there is, you know, you know, it goes through personal trading plan system development, selecting a suitable trading style like we've talked about, developing a trading routine. I mean, what do you do on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis as part of your trading and documenting that and what tools and websites do you use as part of that? What are your risk and money management strategies which we've touched on already? Um, you know, managing your trading business. I mean, my Smart Trader spreadsheet helps me manage my trading business. Your record keeping structure. What are your strategies for your entries and your exits? How are you going to analyse your trading performance? Creating that profitable mindset. And the whole goal is to become a peak performer in the markets. So, you know, that's just an outline of some of the things that are covered along the way. And every chapter is every section that is included in your trading plan, as well as some extra things thrown in and some actual trades to show you how I've done a few things. And my whole goal when I wrote that book was for it to be a trading plan for traders. And um, I was very honoured in 2010 when Money Mag Magazine listed that book as one of the top 10 best-selling finance books. And you know that's when I knew that that's fantastic. I'm really making a difference out there to traders. And one of the differences I wanted to make with the book was to give them some tools to help them. So offering those bonus planning templates of the trading plan template and a position sizing calculator and the smart action steps included and some case studies of some actual trades that I did in a competition back in 2007 and then at the end I show you what a completed trading plan looks like. So it, it really is that guiding, um, you know, trading plan out, book out there to help you with that trading plan. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's a fantastic read and I think uh, anyone who's thinking about getting started in uh, trading or even if they have been trading for a little while and they're, I suppose, in the current market climate, they've realised, hang on, I don't have a trading plan, needs to check it out. Mm. Uh, I know as part of what we're doing here, um, you know, you can go ahead and, and grab yourself a copy, but I'd suggest if you just hold off uh, another week or so, like as I've, I alluded to in the first webinar that we did, um, these webinars are all leading up to the opening or reopening of the online trading mastermind, which uh, the last time we op opened this was over 12 months ago now. So we've had uh, the initial sort of wave of students go through and they're starting to get some absolutely fantastic results and now we're looking to open it up again. So uh, once that happens, we're going to show you a way that you can go ahead and get yourself a free copy of the book plus uh, get personally uh, coached through the mastermind, actually get the coaching and the training that Justine has. I think 
what Justine does as far as have this uh, open book policy, uh, I know on her uh, webinars she has at the end of each financial year, they'll recap, here are the trade, trades that I took, here are the exact results that I got, so you can further have that confidence, because a lot of what people have trouble with is, is getting that confidence once they do have that trading plan, if they even do go to the effort of actually documenting it, then it's another step to go, well, do I have the confidence to go ahead and trade it? And mm. Justine really puts, uh, I suppose, her, her money where her mouth is and actually trades the trading system that you'll learn inside the online trading mastermind. So can make sure you keep an eye on uh, the online trading mastermind.com. We've still got uh, another round of uh, free training material that is, uh, again, we just want to over deliver and, and show you. Uh, so you start to get that feeling that Justine is the real deal, she's here to help you, and she, she's got the goods. So in the next round, um, I've been chatting with Justine, I want to provide a few things from within inside the mastermind. So you can just get a feel for what it's like to be part of her mastermind trading group and see the type of material that she shares. Not only that, I want to um, get her to showcase a little bit outside of the Australian stock market. I, I know we've talked a lot about uh, what goes on uh, in, in, in just in trading when she's trading locally, but uh, these trading methods work uh, in o the overseas markets as well, and uh, particularly like the US stock market. So Justine's mm. got some videos and presentations that I'll make sure that I load up. Uh, so the best thing to do from here uh, is to head over to the online trading mastermind. If you haven't already uh, signed up to keep you in the loop and we can keep you updated as we're leaving, uh, releasing this content, sign up there and just keep an eye as, as the content comes out and when we do open the online trading mastermind like we did last time, um, you're going to want to make sure that you know we want you to know up front before we even open this if this is the right thing for you. I don't want you to feel like um, you know, you're pressured into anything or need to make a snap decision or anything like that. That's why we're giving, giving all of these webinars so you can decide up front, yes, when this opens, this is something for me, uh, and, and you can make the right decision. So uh, we might leave it there, Justine. Just mm -hmm. wanted to thank you again for uh, joining on this webinar and, and really looking forward to getting some feedback from everybody, especially with this webinar and, and the, the next round of content. So thanks again. That's all right. Thank you, David.